Okay, hi everyone. Good afternoon, I'm Philip. Uh, I would like to thank IBM Professor Miklos to invite me to have this 30-minute um, presentation about my research in cryptocurrencies and some uh, developing topics about cryptocurrencies in the accounting and auditing domain. Okay, so let me start my start my presentation with some simple questions. Okay, the first one, do you know what the first created cryptocurrency is? But actually, the um, after the Jennifer's presentation, you have already known the uh, the answer, which is the most popular cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Okay. After this uh, Satoshi Nakamoto's two thousand eight paper uh, about uh, mentioned about the design and the implementation of the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, the the Bitcoin uh, attracts the the attention and become the most popular and with uh, and uh, the cryptocurrency with the highest cap market capitalization for now. Okay, next one. Do you know why is Bitcoin created? Anyone have some ideas or thoughts? Why is Bitcoin created? Um, it was because, I don't have my mic on. Um, I think it was because of the uh, 2008 recession and they wanted a way to to kind of decentralized currency so they couldn't be manipulated and, and be controlled by governments um yeah excellent that's the 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 the, the most accepted answer the, the most accepted reason about the the creation of um, bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies yes the remember 2008 is the key key number okay the year of the global financial crisis so um the design of this um blockchain thing okay, this um, decentralized blockchain okay is to um to enable the money flow to go without the the, uh, the centralized financial institution institution okay thank you and do you know how many kinds of cryptocurrencies are there being transacted now? Any random guess, or you know the specific answer? How many kinds of trend, uh, cryptocurrencies are transacted now? Uh, 500. Yeah, 500. Um, okay, way more, way more than 500. Okay. Anyone want to have another random guess? 10,000. 10,000. Okay. Um, that's too more, too, too much, <laughs> too much. Okay. From this website, okay. There are 4,435 kinds of cryptocurrencies. Are there being transacted on almost 17,000 exchanges worldwide with the total market capitalization around 254 billion US dollars. Okay, so that's the screenshot that I got yesterday. So I think that's the, the, the updated numbers. Okay, by the way, uh, the number of uh, cryptocurrencies, okay, the number of kinds of cryptocurrencies uh, increased by 200 from last month. Okay, so it's still growing for the, uh, for the cryptocurrency environment. Okay. Then, what's the barrier to prevent from the to prevent from achieving the goal of cryptocurrencies? In other words, uh, given the the advantages, given the benefits of cryptocurrencies, why we why would we not use the cryptocurrencies in our daily lives? I can answer, but there's no one else. Sorry. It's not also to jump in. Um, basically, the, the barrier is technology, um, and it takes long to to. Oh, there's a lot of feedback. Um, it takes long to um, send currencies because it, because of the confirmations it takes. So Bitcoin, I know it takes, like we just said, ten minutes. I think yes. Litecoin takes like two minutes, but it's still, mm -hmm. um, you know, long. It takes long to to transfer that. Yes. So that, that that's one reason. Yes. Good. Any other different thoughts? 
why would we not use the cryptocurrencies in our daily lives now? Aren't they volatile? Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, I think the the major reason is because price volatility of cryptocurrencies. Okay. Let's take the Bitcoin to US dollars example. That's the one day price change, price volatility. Okay. It could uh, range from you have uh, around three hundred dollars range in one day. Okay around six hundred dollars in five days that's one month trained six month trained one year and five year okay the uh, the bitcoin the price of one bitcoin reaches around two uh, twenty sorry twenty thousand us dollars at the end of 2017. okay so because of this price volatility uh, it will become a barrier okay for uh for us to use the the cryptocurrencies in our daily lives to purchase or or trades for something okay and that's the uh time series view that's a horizontal view okay about the price volatility of cryptocurrencies okay let's take the uh vertical view okay at the same time okay you can purchase or sell one bitcoin okay the same bitcoin on these exchanges worldwide however the price or the exchange rate for one bitcoin is not it's not the same among those exchanges okay at the same time okay at this specific moment if you per, if you want to purchase or sell uh, one bitcoin if you go to different go different ex, uh, cryptocurrency exchanges, you will find the price for one Bitcoin would be different among those exchanges. Okay, so in 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 terms of accounting, in terms of financial reporting, okay, if companies are holding some cryptocurrencies, then how can we, uh, how should we report the uh, and um, and determine the fair value for these cryptocurrencies? in terms of financial reporting. We That's record, Sorry. okay, in accounting, we record the historical value and in other non-comprehensive uh, non income, we record the gain or loss that we have, but it's not realized, other unrealized yes. comprehensive income. Yeah, but in order to determine the unrealized holding gain or loss, you still need to get the fair value measures at the end of accounting period, right? Yes, but it's very hard. Yeah. Yes, so so that's what uh, that's the that's the purpose of this research. Okay, it's called dynamic principal market determination, fair value measurement of cryptocurrencies. Okay, by the way, one of the co-author is Professor Alexander Sinella, which is the program coordinator. Okay, so in this research about the, uh, the fair value measurement, fair, fair value measurement of cryptocurrencies. Okay. The first objective, okay, we, we are trying to argue that the, the, the accounting treatment for cryptocurrency and uh, cryptocurrency transactions should use the full fair value accounting, okay? And the second part we build up, we come up with a methodology to, to deal with the fair value measurement issue for cryptocurrencies, okay? For the first part, we review many uh, U.S. governmental and the accounting standards in the U.S. or international. Uh, so um, basically, the existing okay, the existing accounting standards about the the classification of cryptocurrencies is called indefinite lived intangible assets. Okay, that's the asset classification under the existing accounting regulation accounting standards under the FSB or uh, under the US GAAP or IFRS, okay? Let's focus on the US GAAP situation, okay? As uh, Nelly, okay, I think Nelly mentioned the, the if we use this classification in definite lived intangible assets to account for cryptocurrencies, the value of cryptocurrencies should be carried on, ca should be carried at historical cost and not be amortized because of the indefinite lift nature. However, the companies, okay, the companies need to perform annual impairment test to concede, to determine whether the, uh, the company needs to recognize the impairment loss for cryptocurrencies, okay? And 
the final final point is special. Okay, under the the intangible assets accounting treatment, the increase in market value would, cannot be recognized and reflected on income statement and balance sheet. Okay, and moreover, for the intangible assets, the reversal of the previous impairment loss will not be allowed. Okay. In other words, the unrealized holding gain or loss would be deferred until those cryptocurrencies are disposed. Okay. So we think uh, these uh, existing and this current asset classification fails to faithfully represent the economic substance for these cryptocurrency um, transactions. So let's take one simple example. Suppose the company purchased one Bitcoin with 5,000 US dollars. After a few months, okay, the price of one Bitcoin went down to 2,000. Okay, following the accounting treatment, the company needs to recognize impairment loss for $3,000. Okay, any questions? Okay, good, let's get continue. After a few months, uh, uh, the price of one Bitcoin rocketed to 9,000. Okay. However, under the existing accounting standard for the indefinite lift in tangible assets, the first part, this reversal of impairment loss cannot be recognized. And this incremental, okay, the, the range from 5,000 to 9,000, this upward adjustment is also not allowed. Okay. And this 7,000 gain, okay, from 2,000 to 9,000, this 7,000 unrealized gain will not be shown on the income statement. These unrealized holding gain can, be, can become realized until this Bitcoin is sold. So that's the, that's the, that's the issue, that's the uh, problem that we think uh, the accounting treatment for cryptocurrencies under the existing accounting standards. So we, uh, the proposed uh, asset, sorry, the proposed asset classification for cryptocurrencies in our paper is called um, intangible investment assets, okay? Uh, the essence of this classification is one to, uh, to the, the, these cryptocurrencies should be valued in a full value accounting, okay? It means that all unrealized holding gain or loss should be recognized immediately in earnings, in current earnings on income statements. So that's our, uh, our argument, okay? So that's the first part of our research. About the second part, the fair value measurement methodology. Okay, this methodology is uh, tightly follow the accounting regulation about fair value measurement under the AACA 20 or IFRS 13. Okay, in definition, a fair value measurement assumes that the transaction to sell the asset or transfer the liability takes place either in the principal market or the most advantageous market. Okay, so in our methodology, the first task is to, to identify the principal market for the specific cryptocurrency pair. And then determine the fair value for this specific cryptocurrency pair at this specific moment. Okay, so the detail, um, detail steps. Okay, the first, the first part, the first task, you need to identify what's the pair you want to value. You want to get the fair value measurements. Okay, let's say uh, Bitcoin to US dollars. Okay, if, oh, uh, as a company, I, uh, the company is holding uh, some good, uh, some Bitcoins, and it, the company wants to prepare the financial statement and report the value of these cryptocurrency, uh, uh, the value of these Bitcoins. Okay, so the uh, the the specific pair you are interested in is the Bitcoin to US dollars. Okay, then you need to filter out, you need to identify those exchanges can trade for this specific cryptocurrency pair. Okay, after identify those exchanges and 
implement our methodology, we would ice, we would assign each exchange for this specific Bitcoin to US dollar pair a base exchange score or BES. This BES, um, the, uh, this BES considered the static characteristics of these exchanges, including exchange oversight, microstructure efficiency, data transparency, and integrity. Okay, for example, under the category of exchange oversight, we consider the jurisdiction of these exchanges and also whether these exchanges have the KYC, know your customer policies, or the AML, anti-money laundering policies. Okay, so consider these static characteristics of those exchanges can trade Bitcoin to USD, then each exchange will get a BES, a base exchange score. Okay, and then next step, okay, we would um, we would get the, the, the new measure called volume adjusted score, okay, based on its name, the B, we adjust the, the previous BS score based on the relative monthly transaction volume on each exchange, okay? So um, this step, Okay, considers the relatively long-term transaction behavior for this specific cryptocurrency coin on those exchanges. Okay, so the 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 exchange with a with a higher transaction volume, with a higher monthly transaction volume, would have a higher weight, would get a higher uh, would get a higher VAS. Okay. The next step, okay, after considering the static characteristics and relatively long-term transaction behavior, in this step, in third step, okay, we consider the relatively short-term transaction behavior, okay? Let's say for exchange A and B, okay, the black line is the, the time for now, okay, the time that we want to get the fair value measure. And the blue dot and red dot is the time that the tra last transaction happened on exchange A and B. Okay, we would expect that the, the principal market would have a shorter time lag between the last trade and the time for now. Because of the, if the principal market, if it is determined as the principal market, the frequency of trade would be, uh, the, the trade would would happen more frequently and leading to a shorter time lag between the last transaction and the time for now that we are going to get the fair value measures. Okay, so we consider this time lag between the last trade and now to get the final decayed volume adjusted score. Okay, so this DVAS, decayed volume adjusted score, include the static characteristics, relatively long-term and short-term transaction behavior for this specific cryptocurrency care among those exchanges. So the principal market would be the exchange with the highest DVAS. Okay. The, the principal market for Bitcoin to your starters would be the exchange with the highest DVAS. And the fair value measure. Okay, the fair value measure for the fair value measure for Bitcoin to US starters at this specific moment would be the price of the last transaction on this determined principal market. Okay. So if you're interested, okay, after, uh, after the class, you can go to this URL and you will go to this uh, demonstration website from the company Luca. And actually it's already a commercialized service. Okay, it's called Luca Prime. Okay. And managed by the company Luca. Okay, 
So that's the, uh, the so any questions about this research, about this Google Cup Prime product to get the fair value measures for any specific cryptocurrency at any moment. No? Okay, good. Then let's share some more issues related to um, cryptocurrencies in accounting and auditing domain. Okay, stable coins. Okay, remember what's the what's the disadvantages about the cryptocurrencies? Okay, it's about the price volatility, about the price fluctuations. So, the the design of this new this new type of cryptocurrency is called stable coins is trying to solve this problem okay how how to solve this problem how to solve this price fluctuation okay this this quite this problem can be solved by backing or uh by backing or backing a coin against a stable assets such as the us dollars euro or other fiat currencies or even commodities okay so the most popular, uh, the most popular stable coins for now is uh, including Tether, USD coin, and Dai. Okay. So as you can see, this price trend. Okay, the price for one Tether to US dollars will be very close to one dollars. Okay, even the price of one Tether is still fluctuated. But if you see closely, okay, the price is very close to one dollar okay so how to address the the price volatility issue would be uh stable coins okay and one more famous or you can say somehow controversial stable coin project would be this libra okay dominated by facebook Okay, the uh, Libra, okay, the objective of this Libra project, the, uh, this Libra blockchain or Libra stablecoin is trying to build a simple global payment system and financial structures that uh, help billion, billions of people with uh, less access to the financial, uh, to the global financial system. Okay, I strongly recommend you to read, okay, to download and read this loop, uh, Libra white paper uh, after the class. Okay, I, I attached uh, the URL here, okay. or you can just Google Libra white paper. Okay, naturally, it's already a version two for this year. Okay, last year in the same course, I present uh, the, this Libra project. Okay, it's already, it's a uh, it's brand new project, and uh, the white paper at that time is the version one. Okay, it has some revisions after this one year. Okay, so you 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 can see you can read this um Libra white paper to uh, to understand what's the the objective what's the design what's the purpose of this libra projects okay this libra stable coins uh still philip you might yes. want to clarify to them that libra was their name until they sold the name to facebook and converted them to luca <laughs> Yes, the, the the company that we uh, we are cooperating. Okay, if you remember, it's called Luca. Actually, its uh, its previous name is called Libra. It's because of this Libra project and the Facebook purchased the name of the the company, and they changed the name to Luca. Okay, so uh, in the Libra project in the uh, or on the Libra blockchain. Okay, they implement, they, they invented this new, uh, uh, new language is called move. Okay, using this uh, language move, you can implement, you can create your custom transaction logic or the smart contracts, okay, on the Libra blockchain in the future. Okay, you can custom, you can set your own uh, transaction criteria, okay, in the smart contracts when you, when you are transacting on the Libra blockchain in the future. Okay, so this technical document is also disclosed on the Libra website. Okay, 
And for now, uh, there are 27 companies or organizations are participating in the Libra organization, which manages the the uh, manages and operate the Libra Libra projects. Okay. So as you can see, the uh, including Lyft, Spotify, okay, Uber, okay, those uh, new tech companies okay, uh, are also participating in this lookup, uh, Libra, sorry, Libra project. Okay, so I think at this moment, uh, the this look, uh, Libra project is still dominated by, somehow dominated by Facebook. Okay. So I think the Libra project, you can, if you are interested in cryptocurrency world, you can, you can, you can read and investigate and understand more about this Libra project. Okay. One, uh, the last few slides. Okay. Audits involving cryptocurrencies. Okay. Recently in this May, okay. In this May, the PCLB issued some guidance about the uh, audits involving cryptocurrencies or crypto assets. Okay, specifically, they mentioned that what's the what's the thing the auditors or firms should care about in terms of the firm level and the audit engage level. Okay, for example, on, uh, in the firm level, uh, the the documents say that the, the the firms should have staff. Okay, in in each uh, audit engagement team, the it should include the staff with specialized skills and knowledge in cryptocurrencies okay if the if the companies are dealing with some uh, if the company are are audit some clients with uh with higher cryptocurrency transactions okay and uh, in terms of audit engagement level okay the the document also mentioned that the, the firms or the for each audit engagement, the auditors should care about the number of cryptocurrency types, the volume of cryptocurrency transactions, the number of customers, the nature of the record booking, uh, sorry, rec record keeping, sorry, record keeping about the cryptocurrency transactions for this client. So uh, the, the, this document, okay, uh, clearly states that what's the what's the the criteria that the auditors and the firms should care about if the clients have a relative high cryptocurrency transactions. So you can also check this uh, specific document from the PCLB website after the class. Okay. So if you want to become an auditor after this program, okay. And if you want to, if you, if you, if you also, uh, if you are also interested in this cryptocurrency world, okay, maybe you can become the so-called specialized, uh, sorry, become the so-called staff with specialized skill and knowledge in terms of cryptocurrencies. Okay, so this cryptocurrency world is still evolving and growing. So, if you are interested in these new new things and so uh you can spend your time in investigating on this issue and if you are if you have some questions or uh, if you have some questions or opinions want to discuss you can always okay contact me with this email or contact professor miklos or abby okay they will help you to reach out to me okay so that's the end of my presentation.